The Jerusalem Gift Shop, 10% off everything. Coupon code ILTV. Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. The order to withdraw United States troops from Syria was officially signed Sunday by outgoing Defense Secretary James Mattis after United States President Donald Trump coordinated the withdrawal with his Turkish counterpart Tayyip Erdogan. Late Sunday night, Trump tweeted that President Erdogan of Turkey has, quote, very strongly informed me that he will eradicate whatever is left of ISIS in Syria, and he's a man who can do it. Plus, Turkey's right next door. Our troops are coming home, end quote. Additionally, earlier in the day, Trump and Erdogan agreed in a phone conversation to prevent a power vacuum in Syria after the United States troop withdrawal. In a statement, the Turkish president said that the two leaders agreed to, quote, ensure coordination between their country's military, diplomatic, and other officials, end quote. But CNN also reported Monday that in a December 14th phone call, Erdogan was explaining the problems he had with the presence of U.S. forces in Syria when the United States president reportedly abruptly said, OK, it's all yours, we're done. Meanwhile, on Saturday, Turkey had already sent military reinforcements to northern Syria near an area controlled by Kurdish forces. This after Erdogan has in recent days threatened to carry out an offensive against the Kurds and wipe them out. Well, now, in the wake of the United States' troop withdrawal, the Kurds, staunch allies of the United States, are left to face this Turkish threat alone. Trump's latest decisions have come as a shock to other United States allies, too, however, as well as to senior Democratic and Republican officials. On Sunday, Trump announced that Deputy Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan would replace General Mattis as the new Defense Secretary effective January 1st, essentially forcing Mattis out of the role nearly two months earlier than his official resignation date. Now, Israel was also shocked by the decision to withdraw U.S. troops, though, though Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has attempted to downplay Israel's disappointment. On Sunday, Netanyahu said that Trump's decision to withdraw troops would not change Israel's policy of acting against Iran in Syria, and said it may even increase Israel's response. He reiterated, however, that United States and Israel cooperation will continue in full and, quote, finds expression in many areas, operations, intelligence, and many other security spheres, end quote. Finally, in related news, on Sunday night, the IDF said that its soldiers fired at armed suspects crossing the 1974 ceasefire line in the Golan Heights along the Syrian border. No Israeli forces were wounded, and the IDF is working to determine the intentions of the unidentified gunmen and whether they had been on an intelligence gathering operation or something else. In other news, on Sunday, Israeli Education Minister Naftali Bennett came out against the United States' Middle East peace deal before any of the details of the plan have been made public. Bennett refused to disclose or acknowledge how he knew what was in the plan, but speaking with Army Radio, he claimed that, quote, Trump's deal of the century includes a Palestinian state, under certain conditions. We will object to that because that means that there will be another Arab entity west of the Jordan River, end quote. Bennett, who leads the right-wing Jewish Home Party within the coalition, has long spoken of a West Bank in which the Palestinians govern themselves, yet still live under Israeli control. But essentially every United States official who has spoken of the White House's mysterious deal has already said that both sides will both love and hate aspects in the agreement. Yet as outgoing United States Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley explained, both sides would do well to take the plan seriously anyway, as a focus only on what is wrong would result in a, quote, return to the failed status quo of the last 50 years with no prospects for change, end quote. She also added that the delayed deal is unlike any previous plan put forth since the conflict began, saying that it's longer and more detailed than any before as well, and includes ideas previously considered unthinkable. While the plan is scheduled to be published within the early months of 2019, and the whole world is waiting on pins and needles. The Israeli HOPE project, initiated under President Reuven Rivlin, awarded two NGOs Monday morning for their incredible efforts towards bridging the gaps between Israel's diverse demographics. President Rivlin said that, quote, two unique groups were chosen out of a large field of candidates. Desert Stars is raising a new generation of leaders in the Bedouin community, while Tech to Peace forms connections between Jews and Arabs via the language of technology and joint study. But the vision of both these groups and their achievements truly represents a chance for Israeli hope, end quote. There were 38 candidates from which to choose this year, but only the two were awarded the 10,000 shekel prize. This was also the first year the prize had a monetary award to begin with. Tech to Peace operates IT and cooperation seminars between Israeli and Palestinian youths, and Desert Stars encourages and teaches the Bedouin community to engage in more effective social engagement. But all the organizations considered for the prize have worked towards facilitating a more united community within Israel, across secular and orthodox, Christian, Jewish, Arab, and others alike, exactly what the Israeli Hope Project was designed to encourage. 
That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.